This is DFSP. It looks so different, okay? There's a little fat trapping. The last one, this thing is, this all used to be pristine subcutis landscape real estate, and it's been just totally overrun by DFSP in trapping, making that honeycomb pattern of fat entrapment here, okay? Classic, islands of stranded adipocytes being squeezed in the middle of the process, the tumor. The tumor has some fine collagen in the background. Mixoid change is pretty common in these. It can be extensive sometimes, and those are diagnostically challenging. Usually it's pretty subtle. If you're having a bad day, this looks like a dermatofibroma, I mean a uh, neurofibroma. They're bland spindle cells, they're long and thin, they can be a little wavy, they can have mucinous mixoidy background. Diffuse neurofibromas and trap fat like this, if you're having a bad day, you can make a big mistake there. So what do you do? What stain would you do to tell apart diffuse neurofibroma from DFSP? Okay, factor 13A, patchy, rare, pot. I don't like factor 13A, honestly. I just don't feel like it helps that much. It does usually stain scattered dendritic cells in DFs, and those tend to be absent in DFSP. 34 is good, because it's strong diffuse staining in the majority of DFSP, unless you have a high-grade fibrosarcomatous version. But the problem is it's so do neurofibromas. 70% of neurofibromas are going to be CD34 positive. So you make a big mistake if you do 34 only. Do an S100 with your 34. That's going to always be negative in DFSP. See, this case actually did have a little hyperplasia of the epidermis and basal pigmentation. So that's a useful clue. And on a test, I would say, you see that, call it dermatofibroma. But in real life, I've definitely had a few that I thought, well, it really has a lot of features of DF. But when I looked close, the cells were so bland and so thin and stretched out and spindly, almost neural looking. And that makes me really think, mm, am I sure it's a dermatofibroma, not a DFSP? And in those times, you can do 34, you can do fish for what's the translocation? 1722 in the genes. Yeah, collagen 1A1 and PDGF beta, platelet derived growth factor beta. And that's a tyrosine kinase. And like other tyrosine kinase, tyrosine kinase inhibitors sometimes have response and can be used to treat really large DFSPs or those rare cases that metastasize. Doesn't usually cure it, but it can hold it at bay. Okay. And then classically, we describe it as having a story form pattern. Uh, in real life, I feel it doesn't always help as much, but story form is kind of this swirled pattern. This is probably not the best example of it. It's one of those things you have to see a bunch of times and then you're like, ah, that's story form. I can describe it a hundred ways and it won't make sense until you've seen a few of them back to back. You're like, oh, that story form pattern. But it doesn't always have it, okay? And DFs can also be story form. So I feel like it's not terribly helpful. The, the fat entrapment like that, that honeycomb pattern, really helpful. And the very bland, thin, stretched out spindle cells are helpful. DFSP. Don't often metastasize, but recurrence is a big problem, and these patients get huge surgeries. I work with a DFSP Facebook patient support group, and these, the scars these patients get are enormous. So it's, it's not a great cancer to have, even though it doesn't kill people usually. Lots of morbidity, okay?